Good afternoon, friends and colleagues from across the country. I'm very glad to be here today at the eDermacon 2022. My name is Dr. Inki Kapoor, and I'm a dermatologist practicing since the last 15 years. I'm the director of the Aesthetic Clinics India. And I'm also a life member of the IDVL, just like all of you who are present here today. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing in this industry session. I'm not representing any pharma house, any pharma company, but I'm here representing all of us as clinicians, as physicians, but as innovators and researchers as well. So I'm a clinician who's also a researcher, who's also an innovator, and I've invented something which is revolutionary. And uh, I feel it's something which will create a revolution in the field of medical hair care in the next couple of years to come. This is a work which has been uh, published, which has been invented, which has been used and which is being uh, put forward to you all, to all my colleagues, all my dermatologist colleagues across the country through this platform, which is the IDVL. Because this is something I believe in. And uh, what we believe is that clinicians are the best researchers. They can be the best innovators and inventors. That's because we face the patients day in and day out. We know the difficulties with existing treatments. We know what patients want. We know what physicians want. We know what causes problems, what doesn't cause problems. What is lacking in current healthcare? What is lacking in current treatment modalities and how it can be improved? So actually innovation should start from clinicians and that's what we are trying to do. So I'm a clinician first. However, innovation and research is also a huge part of my life. And uh, I thank, I take the opportunity to thank the IDVL here for giving me this platform to present something which is really close to my heart, something which I want to put forth across to the entire community. Uh, this is an invention uh, by myself and the co-founder and inventor of this revolutionary invention, is Dr. Shom, who is uh, also a part of the Aesthetic Clinics, is the director of the Aesthetic Clinics. And... Uh, Basically, uh, why we have taken this session here is because something which is a revolution, which is an invention, which has taken years and years of research to come forth, which has a lot of published material, published data, and uh, which needs to be put forth across on a huge platform. 12 minutes of time, which is given in regular conferences, scientific sessions is, I feel, not enough. And that's why we've taken this session to put forth the details on this. What is this invention? Why is it a revolution? What is it that makes it different from other uh, modalities of therapy that are currently available? Um, what is the scientific background behind this? How did this come about? And how is it going to create waves in the field of hair care in the next couple of years to come? So to present this entire thing, to present it, to put forth something like this, across to my colleagues so that they understand what is the science, what is the background, what is the research, and what are the salient features of this particular revolution, and why we think that it's going to create history in the treatment of hair care. So let's begin. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'll just share my screen. Yeah, so... This is what it is. As you can see it here, this is called as the QR678neo. And uh, it's called as the gift of life that will make you smile. So this is a patented. It's got a US and an Indian patent. It's got an FDA approval in treating hair loss. And it's a revolutionary invention. So the next couple of slides that you see will be what is this about? How did this come about? What can it do? What is the difference that it has? What is the difference between this and the current modalities of therapy and why we should consider this? What is the scientific backing? What is the research? And so on and so forth. Now, growth is all that we need. We all know this. And uh, right from when a child is born, uh, we look at growth. Uh, children want to grow up into adults. Businessmen want to grow into their uh, business. Couples want to grow into their relationships. Each one of us seeks growth. And of course, bald men and women need to grow their hair. So growth is something that's desired by all. And uh, 
we need to grow in our professions, we need to grow in our relationships, we need to grow in all spheres of life. So growth is the main feature here and that's what you're going to see in the next few minutes. Hair loss or alopecia is a big problem worldwide. It's a global concern and we all know that current statistics mention that um, uh, above the age of 40 years, more than 50% of females and 70% of males suffer from some sort of hair disorders, some sort of hair loss, which could be genetic, it could be lifestyle choices, hormonal imbalances, stress, and so on and so forth. There's a plethora of causes uh, for hair loss, and we all know that. So considering the world's population, if you consider the world's population 7.5 billion uh, people, then you can consider what is the extent of the problem of hair loss that the world is facing today. And uh, the growth trends and forecasts of the industry, that's the hair care market, uh, states that in the aesthetic medicine segment, in the aesthetic care segment, hair care is one of the fastest growing parts of the aesthetic medicine industry, as you can see with these graphs here. Uh, one thing to mention here is that in the aesthetics um, uh, practice, this particular segment, that's hair care, is generally spearheaded by men. Of course, you have a lot of uh, female patients as well, which come into the picture. But if you have a trichology practice, you'll have a lot of uh, men also coming in for consults, which may not be uh, very common with other cosmetic procedures uh, which are there. So this is a huge, uh, you can tap into a huge, huge segment of the population if you are also a hair care practitioner. The other aspect of this being that hair is generally something which everybody is concerned about. That's one. The second thing is that um, hair care, because hair loss is also, uh, also has, especially androgenetic alopecia also has a genetic component or hormonal component. So these people, you know, one uh, patient of hair loss, especially androgenetic alopecia may be knowing many patients in the same family for that matter, you know, because it's a genetic concern who also suffer from similar problem of hair loss. Uh, you may also have uh, their office colleagues also facing a similar problem because hair loss is so common. And uh, that's why the word of mouth publicity in this segment is very high. So if you have a, a patient who's been treated by you doing very well, the hair loss is much, much better and you've gotten them good hair, they will go and tell 10 people around them who also have a similar problem that so-and-so therapy works really well and why shouldn't you go for this? So the word of mouth publicity is very high. That's why what we say is that the uh, getting patient footfalls in the hair care segment is much easier than getting it probably in the aesthetic uh, cosmetic segment. Uh, for example, I'll just mention as an example, if you have a celebrity whom you have treated, say with Botox or fillers or so many things and made them look younger, much, much younger, 20 years younger, uh, but they'll never go out and say, they'll no, never go out in media or in public and say that so-and-so doctor has treated me with so-and-so treatment with Botox and I've done Botox or I've done fillers and I've got this. That They'll never say that. What they'll say is they've done some face yoga, they've done some exercise and diets and so on and so forth and gotten uh, much, much younger. Although all of us know that's not true. So uh, the propagation, the word of mouth propagation is significant in uh, the field of trichology. Uh, hair, this is also something which we all as physicians must understand that hair problems are not just aesthetic problems anymore. They're also becoming a mental health issue. So we all know that uh, the hair is our crowning glory and whatever is on our hair, on our head is affecting what is there inside the head also. Uh, so with growing hair, you grow your patient's confidence, you develop their personality, you grow their self-esteem as well as enhance their beauty. So you're treating their brains, you're treating the hair outside, but what you're actually treating is their brains. So this is a landmark study, which was published by the Aesthetic Clinics uh, early this year. And uh, this was published in one of the top American journals at Dermatological Reviews, wherein alopecia has been said to have or said to follow an iceberg phenomenon. What is this iceberg phenomenon is we all know that an iceberg 
one third of the iceberg is above the water however a larger part of the iceberg is actually under the water so similarly if you consider alopecia the clinical symptoms that patients come to us with that's the hair loss or the hair thinning or the dandruff whatever it's basically just the tip of the iceberg the actual problems associated with long term alopecia which is the psychosocial aspect of the disease is the larger part of the disease actually which is invisible and which is under the water so this is something which we really need to understand it affects their psyche it affects their brains uh, if it's uh, a long term issue there are a lot of treatments that are available we all know this as dermatologists as trichologists there are so many things that are available right from the age old minoxidil finasteride to laser therapies to stem cells platelet rich plasmas and the invasive procedures like hair transplants and hair surgeries uh, however we all know that despite so many therapies being available there is no single universally effective therapy for alopecia that's precisely because alopecia is multifactorial and it requires a combination of therapies and every therapy which is present here has some of the other issues which are associated with it uh, we'll just go through in brief on each of these and why there is a need for a much better there's a constant uh, invention there is a constant need for something which is as common as hair loss something which has been there for decades ever since man has been there uh, and you have so many therapies but still there are uh, lacunae in this field of medicine uh, so some of the problems with some treatments could be unpredictable results it could be side effects especially with drugs like finasteride and minoxidil uh, it could be expensive costs especially for surgical procedures invasiveness of the procedures which is another thing and a huge problem is also lack of peer reviewed evidence so we as clinicians uh, should be confident about what therapy we are offering to our patients we have to know uh i understand that uh, as a finish physician unless you have studied the scientific backing the scientific data behind a particular therapy that you're offering offering to your patients you will not go ahead with it so that's how it should be uh, if you are offering a therapy then it should have enough scientific backing and evidence for us to offer that we are physicians we are not beauticians we are not um, just anybody and everybody doing hair treatments if you see uh, some day it will be like the neighbor across might also be offering hair treatments you know it's becoming so common that anybody and everybody is has started becoming a trichologist anybody and everybody started treating hair started treating skin but we as dermatologists we as um, trained people in this this is our specialty this is our core specialty and we've been trained in this we know what is the in and out of this how can we prescribe something which does not have scientific backing which does not have enough evidence to prove and which does not have our confidence that what we are offering is something really great now uh, that's one aspect the other thing is patient acceptability and compliance one thing we must understand in this fast paced world where people do not have the time to even look at each other uh, if you expect patients to travel to your clinic for an hour and then come and sit in the clinic and get their blood drawn and then injected and centrifuged and injected which uh, which is painful which requires local anesthetic he's spending one hour in the clinic to get the procedure done and then spending another hour getting back home then you're calling the patient every week every couple of weeks for this session he's spending 2 to 3 hours per session in your clinic where do you think is the patient compliance going to go one it is not economical on the time of the physician and it is not uh, economical on the time of the patient so in today's world we desperately need uh, therapies which are fast which are quick which do not which are not time consuming which are efficacious at the same time and which do not tell on the time of clinicians as well as physicians that is extremely important also they shouldn't be having side effects that we all know they shouldn't be uncomfortable for the patient the therapies should not be uncomfortable for the patient a pleasant experience can always be a good experience and uh, a repeat pleasant experience is always desired so these are some of the things that we must take in uh, consideration when we select therapies for our patients 
minoxidil, finasteride, not going into the details of these. We all know what are the problems, what are not the issues with all these things. I'm not going into all this, but uh, I'm not saying that these treatments should not be used. They have to be used where they have to be used. However, uh, there are certain adjunctive therapies or uh, mainstream therapies rather, which can also give um, a very good result, sometimes in combination with them and sometimes without them as well. <clears throat> hair transplants, uh, we know there are uh, two big issues with hair transplants. One is that it's a surgical procedure, it's invasive, it's very expensive. The second is that hair transplant is basically creation of an illusion. Now, a patient who's lost, say, 20,000 hair follicles, and we are grafting back into them uh, 5,000 follicles to fill up the area which was originally occupied by the 20,000 hair follicles. Do you think it's going to create a natural appearance? It's probably just creating an illusion of presence of hair, what we call as man-made forest. You know, A man-made forest can never be like a natural forest. So that's the difference between uh, something which grows your hair back naturally and something wherein you are grafting hair uh, from other areas and putting into that patch. So that's one difference. The other problem and which is a very important issue is that post hair transplant, if you do not take care of the existing natural hair between the transplanted hair, then you're going to eventually lose the natural hair as well. And again, the patient will face the problem that he came for the transplant in the first place. So these are some of the things which are serious issues with a hair transplant. This we've already discussed. I will not be getting into this again. And uh, yes, this is something which uh, I think I'll be discussing a lot more in detail in this talk. And uh, what's uh, happening here, PRP is um, being done by anybody and everybody uh, around you. And you feel that if you're not doing PRP, you're probably missing out on something. It's That's the condition here. It's probably getting into herd mentality that if my uh, colleague is doing, I must also do it. Otherwise, I lose out on uh, certain things and I'm not offering probably the best to my patients. But um, how PRP came into, be into being is it's been around for a couple of decades. Initially, it was used for uh, orthopedics. Then it was used in uh, dentistry. It was used to treat skin wounds and ulcers. And then they started putting it into the head as well, thinking that it will grow back hair because uh, blood is supposed to be the universal elixir and supposed to be, uh, you know, the one-stop solution for all diseases. Uh, so there are some myths regarding the PRP, which uh, we will be clearing this one by one. And uh, the only thing I would like to say here is that uh, how the, and the presentation will I be doing now uh, regarding the PRP will show that how blindly do physicians follow uh, certain things without uh, giving it a second thought as to what they are doing. Platelet-rich plasma or the PRP is prepared on a per patient basis. We all know that. And the source of growth factors here is the patient's. Uh, platelets or the plasma. Now, there are certain drawbacks and concerns with this procedure. Uh, what I'd like to mention is that uh, there has been a review, there has been a study which has been published in 2018. I will be showing you that uh, paper, the details of the paper shortly. And I would like each one of you to go through that study, uh, which is a literature review on the PRP, which mentions uh, there are some conclusive points in that study which mentions that till date, there is no standard definition of what is a PRP. There is no standard definition. The biggest problem, if you summarize the problems with the PRP, it can be summarized in one word, which is non-standardization. The first thing, there is no standard definition of what is exactly a PRP. Nobody knows what's the exact concentration of platelets, which is supposed to be there in that uh, solution to give you the desired result. That's the first. The second is the number of published data and studies, which are RCTs on the PRP, is very, very minimum. And whatever studies have been published, they have mentioned that there are a lot of loopholes in these study. The first being there is a lot of uh, interpatient and intrapatient variation. Now, what this means is interpatient. So suppose I am doing uh, getting a PRP done today and you are also getting a PRP done today. The concentration of platelets is going to be different in the uh, blood of both of us, right? 
so the concentration of final growth factors that we receive into the scalp is going to be different so how is it possible that we'll get the same results even though we have the same stage of alopecia or we have the same issue of hair loss the same cause or whatever other things being standard how are we going to get the same results this is called as interpatient variation the platelet concentration no two play, uh, person is going to be the same that is why the efficacy will by default differ among in both of us so that will be interpatient variation now the next is another big issue is intrapatient variation now what does that mean today i'm getting a prp done i'm getting a prp done again next month i'm getting it done again next month every month also the concentration of platelets in my blood is not going to be the same how is it going to be the same in the human body things change every day they change by because of their lifestyle because of environmental factors because of stress because of diet because of exercise so many things your hemoglobin is not going to be same every month your wbc count is not going to be the same every month how can your platelet count be the same it cannot be the same so even in the same patient there is a lot of variation today i'm getting a prp done i'm getting a good concentration of growth factors next month i fall sick i'm going to get a prp done again now the concentration of growth factors may be lesser third month again it may be different so how is there a standardization this is the biggest problem with prp there is no standardization the other areas of lack of standardization with the prp is the devices are not standard anybody is using any device for uh, the centrifuge etc etc protocols for preparing it are not standard frequency of applications amount to be injected number of sessions mode of application anyone each and everybody is following their own technique so there is no standardization one there is no standardization in technique second there is no standardization in administration and third there is no standardization in protocols so that's the first and most important thing that is precisely probably the reason why prp still does not have a patent while prp still doesn't have an fda approval to treat hair loss okay though it's been around for so many years and anybody and everybody is doing it it's also a cumbersome procedure you need to draw the patient's blood the patient comes in you draw the blood then you centrifuge and then you separate and then you inject it's going to take a lot of time most of the studies show methodological inadequacy that we've already discussed the resulting substance varies from person to person facility to facility that's again something which has been discussed there is a need of extra armamentarium you need devices you need this you need that you need sterilization you have contact with body fluids and so on it's a painful procedure we all know prp is painful even if you give a local anesthetic or topical anesthesia it's still going to be painful itchiness of scalp and occasionally at least this is what i have observed in my practice not everybody has similar so some people will have okay results some people will have no results some people may have of excessive hair loss now why that happens there's another that's another story which we'll see in the next couple of slides so prp is basically jack of all trades master of none it is not specific for hair treatment you are injecting it into the skin for vampire face lifts you are injecting it into ulcers for healing you are injecting it into uh, the teeth for dental Uh, regrowth you are injecting it into the scalp you are injecting it anywhere and everywhere so you feel that anywhere you inject prp is going to create miracles how is that going to happen i really don't know it's not fda approved for hair regrowth this is what i was talking about so there are some patients who get uh, increase in hair loss there are some patients who do not get absolutely any response now why does that happen one is there is scientific conflict now what is the scientific conflict we all know these are the growth factors which are there in a prp solution we all know this is standard now with current uh, scientific evidence what has come forth you can see the things in red the sentences that's what i want to highlight transforming growth factor beta that's tgf beta which has been found to be which was supposed to be one of the major growth factors to stimulate hair growth in the prp has now been found to be uh, playing an important role in miniaturization of hair shafts so it's an inhibitory growth factor in a huge portion of the hair cycle you also have epidermal growth factors which are now been found to be a biological switch which turns off and on turns off and on throughout the entire hair follicle cycling and some parts of the hair cycle it stimulates in some parts is inhibitory how can you administer something which is stimulating some follicles and inhibiting certain follicles because in the scalp the hair follicles are in different stages of development right so that is another problem which is there with the prp 
this was the paper that I was speaking about. This is a comprehensive review on PRP for androgenetic alopecia. I would want all of you to read this paper and the exactly the last couple of slides, whatever I have highlighted is all mentioned here as a summary, as a gist. This is something that we are looking at. This is something which is called result, okay? And this is something, if you can give this to your patients, then you have actually treated alopecia. So this is just a funny slide here that I just put in. Uh, this was a statement by Henry Ford, who was the inventor of the first car. And what he said is that if he had asked his customers back then, when he developed the first car, if he had asked them, uh, what do they want? They would have merely said they wanted a faster horse because nobody at that time knew that there could be something called as a car. There could be something like a car. Everybody used to use horses and animals. They thought, okay, we need something which is a better animal or better horse. But nobody ever imagined that there could be something like a car. So it's similar in hair care as well. Uh, anybody and everybody, all your colleagues, your uh, friends and family using stem cells, they're using um, PRP, etc. You also feel that you should be using it. And then if somebody asks you, what do you want? Uh, something better, then you will say you want a better PRP. Is that so? Or do you want something which is much better than a PRP, something which is a revolution? Think about it. This is exactly the reason why this thing has come into being, which is called as a QR678neo to overcome some barriers, challenges, and uncertainties in hair regrowth therapy. And uh, these are uh, the salient features of the QR678, which is uh, not there in any other therapy, which is being currently used uh, for hair uh, care, apart from finasteride and minoxidil, which is it's patented in the United States, it's patented in India, and it's FDA approved in India for treating hair loss. Now, patent, the very fact or the very word patent means that uh, if it's, a, it's got a United States patent, it's very difficult to get this. Uh, that's the first thing because it's a complete legal procedure and uh, throughout they scan literature throughout the world, they scan patents throughout the world to see if there is any other solution across the world which has a similar composition. So a patent on the United States means that there is no similar composition anywhere on the earth in this date. Similarly patented in India and FDA approved for treating means that it's safe and efficacious in humans uh, to be used for that particular indication. Uh, this is now, what is QR678? You all might be wondering, what is QR678? QR is the QR code that we use, the scanning code, which stands for QR, which is quick response. And 678 was Morse code, which means so, solution to a disease which earlier had no answer. The QR678 new is uh, presented as a glass, a sterile glass vial of 5 ml, which has uh, a seal over it. It's got a plastic and a metal seal. And this solution is uh, something which contains a fixed amount of specific hair growth factors which have been researched, which have been studied and zeroed in upon before they have been put into this solution. So it's hair growth specific factors in the right concentration, in the right combination, uh, which is being delivered at the target site, which is the hair bud. The advantages, it's uh, cost effective, it's oh, got over 90% success rate in patients selected appropriately, plant derived, zero side effects, and it's non-surgical. The salient features we've already discussed, it's a 5 ml vial, so one session requires 1 ml uh, of administration, so one vial goes for five sessions. And uh, this vial, the storage is very simple, it just needs to be stored in the door of the refrigerator. Results, we'll be going through in detail on this. This is the composition. Uh, I must present to you what exactly this has, uh, which works the way it does. How, how does it work and why does it work in different types of alopecia? And what are the salient features of this composition? So uh, these are basically a combination of biomimetic peptides. Peptides are considered cosmetic. They are not drugs uh, in India and the European Union. Uh, how this works, yes. So I'll be taking through uh, you in detail on how and which parts of the hair cycle it works. But basically where it works is the signaling between uh, different uh, stages, uh, different uh, growth factors throughout the hair cycle to stimulate certain phases in the hair cycle. That's what we'll be seeing uh, in the next. Uh, we all know that uh, growth factors are basically the molecular uh, level entities 
which govern the entire hair cycle, whether it is growth, whether it is shedding or whatever it is. So growth factors are the molecular level entities which are responsible for the entire hair growth cycle. And that's where the QR678 targets. For any therapy which you use to treat hair fall, there are certain things which it needs to be able to complete. So this is, one is that it should work on stimulating the anaphase. The second is that it should increase the blood supply at the level of the hair root. It must maintain and sustain the anagen phase for a long period of time. It must work on hormonal element, if any, in the hair loss, which is basically inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, uh, for example. It should reduce inflammation. We all know that androgenetic alopecia now is considered a chronic inflammatory disease as well. So anything which targets inflammation is welcome. Uh, it should also uh, be able to protect the hair follicle from cytotoxic insults, especially if you want to treat post-chemotherapy hair loss, you want to treat post-COVID hair loss, telogen effluvium, etc. So the six uh, growth factors which have been incorporated into the QR solution, each of them have their own uh, mechanism of action. And uh, let me mention here, copper tripeptide is a very, very important molecule here because it has, it can do all these functions which I have just mentioned. So these are in detail what each of the growth factors do in this composition. And this is a pictorial representation of that. So if you see here, the bottles of the QR678, which have been used, are shown here at different phases in the hair cycle. So here you see the first uh, picture here where the QR is working on the hair shaft. The yellow uh, squares that you see below down are the hormone receptors where the QR works as well. You go lower down in the catogen phase, you see it stimulating the blood supply. Then you go into the telogen phase, stimulating blood supply and stimulating the stem cell bulge to get into anagen. And then from telogen to anagen, helping to convert uh, the hair follicles from telogen to anagen and then sustaining anagen for a long period of time. So this we've already seen how the, uh, uh, what is the protocol of administration? The sessions are spaced three to four weeks apart. And uh, every session takes about 10 to 15 minutes at the most. And it's administered in the entire affected area of the scalp. One ml of solution is enough per session. This is the entire treatment protocol. Uh, these are some of the videos which uh, I will not be showing you currently because uh, this will be shown to you by Dr. Arundha, uh, which will be the next presentation of how the QR is injected. I'll just mention a brief mention here. It's basically taken in an insulin syringe. The patient comes in, walks in, sits into the chair, and you section the hair, you clean the scalp, uh, draw the QR, uh, one ml of the QR into the syringe and this, just keep injecting via the Napach technique in the affected areas. The entire procedure takes about 10 minutes and the patient can just get up and go. You do not need any topical anesthesia. There is no bleeding and the patient is really comfortable. It's basically a lunchtime procedure. Every three to four weeks, you can call the patients for their follow-up sessions. The indications of the QR. Male pattern hair loss. Male pattern hair loss, even stubborn cases wherein not responded to traditional line of therapy, 8 to 10 sessions of the QR678 uh, giving significant results. These are the befores and the afters. The female pattern baldness, uh, whether associated with hormonal disturbances or not associated with hormonal disturbances or having androgen hypersensitivity, uh, even in stubborn cases wherein the response has plateaued or it's not working any further with traditional line of therapy, you can go add the QR678 to give you wonderful results. Post-transplant hair loss. Yes, post-transplant, we've discussed this before. You need to maintain the existing hair, which is there, the natural hair. If you don't do that, you'll end up with balding again. So post-transplant, two months later, after transplant, you can begin the patient on QR678 regular sessions and look at the improve. The results can, act, in fact, improve uh, even after the transplant. Alopecia areata, stubborn cases of alopecia areata also are recurring, not responding to traditional line of therapy. Add the QR678 uh, as uh, adjunctive therapy and you can see wonderful results even in alopecia areata. 
post covid hair loss something that we've seen we are seeing a lot nowadays as covid um, uh, the covid pandemic is uh, going uh, on and uh, patients typically come uh, crying to the physician with packets of hair loss in their hand and uh, saying that if they're not treated within a month's time they lose all their hair so this is a very alarming condition uh, however the qr678 works brilliantly well and it can even be used as a monotherapy in these cases of hair loss couple of sessions four sessions down the line the hair fall completely stops post chemotherapy induced hair loss we know persistent chemotherapy induced hair loss so post chemotherapy most of the patients do regain their hair back but there is an unfortunate group of patients who go into persistent alopecia where the hair follicles get dormant and they are not able to stimulate that again with anything that you do add the qr678 and see the benefits so here again qr678 monotherapy amazing results what you can do is two months down the line once the chemotherapy is done you can introduce the qr678 uh, so that the patient uh, does not actually go into the alopecia at all so it can also be used as a prophylactic therapy here this is another uh, class of patients youngsters generally who are uh, airline crew who are celebrities who are uh, in front of the camera they constantly playing around with the hair doing treatments every now and then straightening perming coloring etc etc the hair gets damaged brittle the roots get damaged and these people are very likely to suffer from hair loss disorders later on you can use the qr678 as a prophylactic therapy in them to sustain and to reju rejuvenate their hair look at the uh, amazing benefits Benefits that this can give, even as monotherapy. Uh, this is just to show about one lakh plus patients treated. The QR was initially being used in earlier stages of alopecia. It showed good results, and now we have started using it in higher grades of alopecia as well. Of course, in these grades, you will have to combine them with medical therapy uh, alongside. This is the most important part of the presentation, which is evidence-based medicine. Now, this is something which I. Uh, in which i really admire that we've been able to do this and uh, this is what builds up the confidence of physicians it builds up the confidence of patients that what they are using actually or what the physician is prescribing is actually peer reviewed in literature and there's enough data available on whatever claims are being made in this presentation so this is the first study this is the animal efficacy study which was published in the plastic reconstructive surgery journal which is a very respected journal in the field of aesthetics and plastic surgery and uh, which proved that it is safe in and uh, safe and efficacious in animals and thereafter we underwent uh, the human trial which was a pilot study which was uh, published in journal of cosmetic and laser therapy another well known uh, well respected journal in the field of uh, cosmetic uh, dermatology and wherein there were 1000 patients males as well as females with androgenetic alopecia not responded to traditional line of therapy introduced the qr678 in them and statistically significant improvement in hair loss and improvement in the total hair count and the hair uh, density and um, uh, diameter and uh, thereafter uh, what we went ahead this was something very important to be done we wanted to compare what is the difference between currently existing modalities of therapy to treat hair loss versus the qr678 how is going to be different what is the advantages of the qr678 and this has to be published so once it published once it has undergone a trial and a study that's when it creates a, a impression of the scientific nature of this particular invention so qr678 versus prp wherein uh, what we saw was uh, three times better results with the qr678 with minimal if any side effects you can see the red bars here these are all side effects with the prp and the gray ones is with the qr there is hardly any problem with the qr678 it's a plant based simple therapy uh and this is something that we've been discussing all throughout i've discussed this earlier will not go into it again but i've just tabulated this to put forth across that how is this different from the prp one must understand what are the drawbacks with current modalities and what is it that we want and what is it that we are getting with the newer therapy uh, and that's the particular reason why we should be incorporating this into our practice the qr678 new is a standardized therapy the concentration of growth factors the method of injection frequency amount to be injected is all standard it is a specific concentration every patient is receiving the same concentration of growth factors in the same technique with the same frequency and so on and so forth is completely standard prp there's no standardization there's robust clinical data on safety and efficacy of the qr which is not the case with prp 
QR is three times more effective. We've seen the study that I've shown you. It's a targeted therapy only for treating hair growth factors. I cannot sit and put in QR into the face and say it's, it gives skin rejuvenation and it gives a facelift. No, it has got only hair specific growth factors, which do only what they're supposed to do. Unlike the Jack of all trades, master of none, which is a PRB, which is being put anywhere and everywhere across the body. Proven results in case of androgenetic alopecia, anagen effluvium, alopecia areata and telogen effluvium with the QR6 range. There's enough published literature on this as compared to the PRP where where is the valid evidence. The QR678 is easy to use. It's quick to use. It's a fast therapy. Doesn't waste the physician's time. Doesn't waste the patient's time. The patient comes in, walks in, gets a lunchtime procedure done and is out. There's no downtime. And as far as the physician goes, if he treats one patient with the PRP or the stem cell, he takes one hour to treat that patient. And in the same one hour, he can treat five patients with the QR678, believe me. There's no growth inhibitory factors. We've already discussed this. There is no investment in terms of device, no centrifuge, no sterilizers, nothing is required here. There is no biohazard because there's no contact with body fluids and it's got negligible side effects. It's also a patented and FDA approved therapy. I have mentioned what is the importance of this particular point uh, in my earlier slides. This is something that I would like all of you to uh, hear. That's precisely the idea why the QR678, what is the logic? Uh, it's a very simple comparison. It's common sense. Why should you be using actually uh, something from which you are extracting growth factors and then putting in where you don't know what is the concentration, you don't know what is working, what is not working, vis-a-vis -vis something which is standard, which is composed, which is proven scientifically and which you know is going to give what it is supposed to give. Please uh, listen to this presentation. Hey, I heard vitamin C serum is really good for the skin. Let's get some fresh vitamin C extracted from oranges. What? Why? Are you okay? Vitamin C containing serum is so readily available and from some of the top companies. Well, I just wanted it fresh. So, all serums contain fresh vitamins. Why are you so shocked? Weren't you going to get that PRP treatment for your hair? And didn't you tell me PRP contains stem cells and growth factors for your hair growth? Doesn't PRP involve taking your own blood and preparing growth factors from it? Yes. So, you know, they take out your blood and extract hair growth factors from it before they inject it in your scalp, right? You know this wastes a lot of time and is painful too. Why can't they just inject the hair growth factors directly? Isn't it like extracting vitamin C from oranges instead of using a ready-made and standardized skincare serum containing vitamin C? Oh, I never thought of it that way. Do you know there are 6 growth factors in QR678 hair growth treatment? Do you know these are prepared with latest technology? Do you know QR678 has been proven to be 300% more effective than PRP? Then why do you want to get your own blood drawn out just to prepare PRP for your hair growth? So uh, going ahead with uh, the uh, published studies, the QR678 as an option for treating female pattern hair loss in patients with polycystic ovarian disease. This is again published in the uh, JCD, the Journal of Cosmetic Surgery, wherein 20 females diagnosed with PCOS were treated with the QR678. These were patients who did not respond to traditional modalities of therapy. The introduction of the QR678 boosted the hair growth and gave fa fantastic results. Uh, these studies are all present on PubMed for anybody to have a look at them and it's all present online. Uh, the next is persistent chemotherapy-induced alopecia, wherein we had taken 20 patients who had post-lung cancer and breast cancer chemotherapy alopecia, which were not responding to uh, normal methods of therapy. Uh, the QR678 was introduced to give significantly better results within eight sessions. Again, the QR678 tried in higher stages of alopecia, in higher grades of androgenetic alopecia, wherein uh, we have 
uh, combination of minoxidil and finasteride along with the QR678 giving amazing results. So these are two groups which were uh, group A and group B wherein we had uh, patients with QR678 alone and the second group was with QR678 with the combination therapy and the results yes were better in higher grades of androgenetic alopecia with the combination. This is what you can see, the combination therapy giving amazing results. The QR678 in alopecia areata, stubborn cases, not responding to therapy, you can uh, give it along with a combination of intralesional steroids. So this is group A, which was treated with intralesional steroids only. And then group B, which was treated with the new QR678 new with the intralesional steroids. And the results were much, much better and much more long lasting in the second group. This is uh, QR678 with uh, in post hair transplant patients, wherein after the hair transplant also, we have had uh, uh, introduction of the QR678 to maintain significantly good results. So this was group A with treated with placebo after transplant, group, uh, group A, sorry, treated with the QR and group B treated with the placebo and a much better improvement in the first group. Post-COVID hair loss, this has just been very recently published in the JCD with uh, beautiful results with QR as monotherapy. 89% of the patient showed excellent gro growth within four sessions of the QR678 monotherapy. You will be seeing a significant reduction in the hair loss in these patients. And this is the phase four trial, which has been published. It's a multi-center, multi-ethnicity trial. Uh, carried across uh, the entire Indian subcontinent to prove the safety and efficacy of this therapy. This is again uh, telogen effluvium after bariatric surgery with the QR678. This was published in the textbook of bariatric surgery, which was released uh, late last year. And uh, this, of course, is just to show you that earlier the patients used to be more in the age group of 31 to 40. However, now we treat patients right from age group of 15 years up to 70 years uh, with good results across ages. This is the United States patent and the Indian patent that is there, uh, which we have. And uh, this is the milestones in development. So basically started as a research on retinoblastoma in IIT Mumbai, which was wherein an interesting phenomenon on hair loss was discovered. And thereafter, we discovered the exact molecules which are responsible for this particular phenomenon. Uh, thereafter, the animal trials were done. And then there was a pilot study on 1,000 patients. Thereafter, the US, United States patent, the Indian patent, and then finally, the Indian FDA and the Kuwait FDA approval. And and uh, up to, we've reached up to the European Union and the United Kingdom launch, which has happened uh, in January this year. So this is, again, a couple of products which we believe intellectual property is amazing. And uh, that is the only thing that will create confidence in physicians and clinicians to go ahead and uh, try out therapies, which uh, they have understood that it's got a scientific backing. And this is what they actually need developed by physicians, invented by physicians and being used by physicians. So we have this entire armamentarium which is going to come up. Currently, we just have the QR678 Neo solution, but uh, the serums, shampoos and hair booster supplements with enough scientific backing is also in the pipeline. These are very proud to mention it's an invented in India product, which is trusted globally by doctors. So something amazing for Indians, for us. These are the countries where it's currently available and it's helping millions and millions of patients across the world. This is uh, the recent recognition. So the government of India has started recognizing this. And this is the award that was won as the best innovation award of 2021 uh, at the Raj Bhavan in Mumbai by the governor of Maharashtra. So extremely proud and privileged uh, to have the uh, authorities, the governing authorities realizing and uh, appreciating efforts of doctors and scientists. And uh, ongoing research products trying to get into topical formulation and trying to get into reaching as many people as possible, as many physicians as possible across the world. This is our social media channel. You can also communicate with me on rinki.kapoor at aestheticclinic.com. We'll be happy to support in any which way is required. And I'm thankful to the IDVL to give me this opportunity because this is the time that I needed to present uh, um, to the content of my heart about something which I truly believe in and which I think is going to create a revolution in the lives of patients and physicians uh, across the country and probably across the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for a patient listening.